GM. It's been a long time coming, and I'm black now, black and back, uh, with a long play video. Um, and I know a lot of you find these videos very useful. So we're straight into a game, and I'm playing someone higher rated than me. We have a Sicilian on the board. I'm black, e4, c5, knight to f3, and I'm going to see what happens here. And of course, the idea of these videos, if you haven't seen them before, is we have a longer time limit. Forget about the rating, don't go on about that. It's about me as a grandmaster explaining my ideas so you can get into the mind of a grandmaster and learn how a grandmaster thinks. So what we have here is the open Sicilian and uh, this is an opening I I I've looked at a bit recently because I've just played in the British Knockout Championships and I, I lost the game to Britain's best ever chess player Mickey Adams uh, only two days ago in, in this precise uh, variation here and I played knight to c6 now I normally this is the standard starting position for uh, the open Sicilian and now I have to decide what setup to play the Nyadorf the most popular move is with a6 the dragon my my common move is with g6 in this in this game I'm gonna try something a bit different so I'm gonna go knight c6 which is the classical Sicilian uh, and this is one of the oldest variations of, of the Sicilian opening and um, the idea of this is it's very simple you just develop sensibly and you wait and see what white does and later on you can get very exciting if white castles queenside I can start attacking on the queen side and white starts attacking on the king side so it really depends what white plays here in the way that I play the position. Okay, so bishop c4, and this is, um, I can't remember the name of it now, but this is this is a very aggressive way to, to play the position. Um, so when you're playing chess, you have to think about your setup and your opponent's setup, and normally with this move, well, white can castle kingside, which is a more slower positional way to play, but the most aggressive move is if white goes bishop e3, queen e2. There's no point putting the queen on d2 really in a lot of these lines. You can do that as white. But on d2 and the bishop on e3, you only do that when you have bishop h6 ideas. And that's good when I fianchettoed, but not against this variation. So the scariest line is bishop e3, queen e2 and castles queenside. But we get very fun positions then. I'm going to play e6 blocking out the bishop on c4 and again we have this sort of traditional setup here um i have to rely uh, on my center i have to try and uh, basically uh claim that my center is 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 very strong here and that my opponent won't break through well no don't want to do that i don't want to do that oh god Oh, leave, leave, leave the mouse alone, Simon. <laughs> uh, that's the danger, isn't it? Pre-moving. And, and really, okay, so uh, it looks like my opponent might go for the most aggressive uh, setup, which could be great fun. I can't remember the theory here, though. Uh, it's been, you know, it's one of those lines where you, you should really know what you're doing. But this could be very, very good fun. I mean, the one thing I know I have to do is if he goes for queenside castling, I have to start an attack on the queen side and there's two ways of doing that a6 and b5 or in most sicilians you have the open c file so i want to get a rook to c8 now if i go bishop d7 in this position maybe i can but i'm i'm wondering if my opponent can go knight here attacking that pawn i probably can go queen b8 there and it should be all right so maybe i will do that bishop d7 and i just want to watch out for any tactics knight there and then queen b8 and i defend that pawn and i get ready to play a6 and kicking his knight away it looks okay to me so i'm going to do that first so this move is useful before i is i mean i'm just going on on natural logical thought process here i don't know the theory but what you guys need to do is when you're playing an opening okay he's gone for the more boring option you need to know what ideas you're trying to play and I wanted to delay my king side development because I thought it was more important to create play on the queen side if my opponent had castle queen side. He hasn't done that now. 
so I can develop kingside, I think. But first of all, I'm going to play a6, because a6 is a normal move. It stops knight b5, and as I've mentioned later on, in the Sicilian, when you're playing the black side, uh, most of the play comes on the queen side. So I, I want to play b5, I want to play knight here. Okay, that's a rather peculiar move. He's wasted a tempo by putting his bishop here and putting it here. Uh, I, I don't think that can be a very good plan of my opponents. And before I get going with my queenside activity, I need to finish my development and get my king safe. My king will have to castle this way, so naturally I'm going to develop my bishop and get castled. And once I've done my full development, only then will I start thinking, do I go b5, do I go rook c8? And another thing you have to do is when your opponent plays a move, you, you, you've got to work out what their plan is. And it, it's, it's very clear here that my opponent wants to throw the f-pawn up the board, and this is a very normal idea. I'm going to castle. We cannot fear his plan, and I fully expect him to play f4 here. And often he can try to storm me over here, but this is quite a risky strategy for my opponent because if he starts pushing his pawns, later on his king becomes a bit exposed because he's lost that protection. So if the position does open up, his king can be in just as much danger as my king here. Okay, so he's gone here. Now what moves do I need to think about him playing? Well, e5 and f5 are two considerations. And... I've, uh, I mean, f5 looks a more natural way for him to play. And against that move, I will probably come to this square with my knight. This is a very nice square for my knight. Now, g4 could indeed occur. And how am I going to meet g4, g5? Um, well, I've got to find a good square for my knight. So I can either then consider trying to break the position open because he's exposed his king. And it seems at the moment I want to keep things flexible. I, I don't really want to play anything yet because I want to see how my opponent uh, continues developing his position. So I want to play a useful move that improves my position. So either b5 or rook c8 uh, seem to be the two moves I want to play. Now, which one's more useful? Rook c8 is very natural. Um, if I, I mean, do I have to worry about knight takes, bishop takes, then e5 here? Let's have a think. So let's say I go b5, knight takes, knight, bishop takes, e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, because his bishop's then opened up. I don't think so, because knight d5, and he's only got one piece attacking h7, so I think I'm okay. So do I go b5 or do I go rook c8? Rook c8 might be useful for controlling some squares over there. Um, but b5, I can go b4 quickly and I can kick that knight away. So that also makes a lot of sense. Which one Which one is, is more logical here? I think I'll go for rook c8, bringing another piece into uh, the game. b5 will probably come. And again, I have to admit, I don't have much experience in these positions, but I looked at some games, and this is the way you guys should improve. Once you pick an opening, I use chess space. I think chess space is an awesome tool. I pick an opening position. And then I search for the games of top players and I try to work out what plans they use. That's basically what I'm trying to teach you here. I'm trying to teach you the plans of what the top players play uh, to help you improve. Okay, so he's gone queen here. Maybe he wants to come here and attack here. This could be a very normal idea for my opponent. The other thing I can do is try to get rid of that bishop because that, that could actually be his best attacking piece. So let's just have a think. Knight here, then e5 is the only worrying move. Then if I take here, he takes on f6. And if I don't have a good move there, I could be in trouble. And I can't see a good move in that position. Another way I could play this is to take the knight off and go bishop c6. Then I have some useful diagonal here. Because I'm worried about this plan. Queen h3 attacking here. Well, if he does play that, I do have e5. So do I need to panic yet? Another very good defensive idea often is to go rook here and bishop f8, but then f7 becomes weak. So I don't like that in this position, I don't believe. So I think I will continue with b5. And let's just hope that I don't get in any monstrous attack here. So if the queen comes to h3, the thing I'm figuring is that I, I have an e5 move. And if I can play e5 at the right moment, maybe knight takes knight, bishop takes e5. Isn't that just winning a piece? Has he just blundered into this? He's played this very quickly, but I did have this prepared. 
because his idea now is to go knight takes knight e5 and try to checkmate me here but I believe I can take here well okay you can go e5 because if I go e5 now he goes knight f5 but knight takes here is he going to go e5 is that his crazy idea and then then it gets very interesting yeah then I can go okay let's see let's see what happens he has to go e5 here because if bishop takes e5 and I win a piece I attack his bishop I attack his queen so what's he what's he up to here can't I just go e5 and now um, I attack two pieces a little little simple tactic there and when you play this when you play a Sicilian you kind of have to have balls of steel you know you, you, you honestly you have to be very careful you have to you have to face these attacks but the great thing is it's a great way to play for a win the Sicilian because you have loads of counter-attacking moves just like this move you, you often have to be brave you have to foresee what your opponent's planning but then as long as you you have stuff like this covered it should be all right i mean okay this position's uh, is is there any hope for my opponent uh he's losing a piece i mean queen h4 pawn takes d4 e5 and then if my knight moves he can take on h7 checkmate but i don't believe that so let's have balls of steel queen queen here i can't even go knight takes there but then that looks a bit risky so, oh, why do I keep pre-moving? Okay, let's just not pre-move and I should be all right. I mean, he, he's clearly played a plan here without thinking and he's not aware of my, he hasn't been aware of my ideas. On the other hand, I've been very aware of what my opponent's trying to do. Okay, so I thought, I think he has to try this idea. And the point is pawn takes pawn e5 and that will require some calculation and if I calculate properly I feel like I should be winning so pawn takes pawn e5 then do I have knight e4 unleashing the bishop against his queen of queen h5 just g6 and as long as I stop the checkmate ideas he can't keep his queen on the h file so what I'm looking at pawn takes pawn e5 knight e4 unleashing my bishop against his queen and his only idea is to try to keep these two pieces there. But I don't think he can do that. Because the queen here, I go g6. I gain a tempo and I block his bishop out so I'm safe. He can't go here because my bishop. So that looks to be winning for me. I'm going to play it confidently. I'm just going to take this one. I'm not going to show any fear. Again, like I said, if you play Sicilian, you have to be brave. And the point is, if pawn here... Well, maybe I have other good moves. If pawn here, I might even be able to go g6. Um, pawn takes here. Bishop takes... And then I take the knight on c3. So I, I don't think, uh, I, I mean, I've got a couple of moves after this move e5. e5, I like knight e4 because it, you know, I think it's best to always try to pick the most forcing option. Um, so knight e4 does look very forcing to me, but I should consider the other ideas here. I mean, if I play g6, um, it looks very strong as well. Pawn takes here, just bishop takes, attack his queen, attack his knight. And if g6, if he moves his knight, then my knight has surely a good square to jump into. Something like knight here. g6 might even be safer. Just just, just really kill this piece. Why not play this move? Let's play g6. I mean, knight e4, as you see, was my one idea. But I think it's actually very important just to block this bishop out. This is his one, one dangerous piece. And I am a piece up here, so uh, as long as I don't get mated. Uh, and knight e4 was probably working, but, uh, you know, it's a bit more... It seemed to be to be a bit more tactical. And when, when you're when you're material up, there's no point uh, going into tactics, is there? You, you might as well... You might as well keep it as safe as you can. Uh, you only want to really enter into tactics, and if you're very confident, they're going to work. Or if, uh, you know, your position is maybe a bit dodgy and you want to complicate things to confuse your opponent. While we wait for this, Ginger Jim have released a new DVD. I think this is honestly one of our best DVDs ever. It's the Leningrad Dutch. It's a two-part DVD. And in total, it's about 11 hours long. It's filmed jointly by myself and Grandmaster Ruland Prusis who's an expert so two grandmasters for the price of one and um, you know if you want to learn a great opening against d4 it's an opening for you go to gingergm.com shop i'll talk about it more in another video and um, it's out now it's got everything you need second move alternatives 
in the Dutch as well. So you you know if, um, it's it's it, it, it's a very good DVD, and I can honestly say that um, very hard work, very high level. Okay, well my opponent can really resign here, but um, I'm just going to try to exchange off pieces now. When you material up, make exchanges. So I want to get rid of this bishop, which is pinned, and we we should be an easy win now. And and he can he can actually resign. The only problem is long play time limit is you know if if your opponent is very stubborn and insists to just run his time i have one guy who who blundered a rook and he just sat there and waited for his time to tick down it was like oh come on man come on man you know <laughs> just please give me a break um but okay i mean I, I, there's nothing wrong with not resigning especially at lower level but i think at grandmaster level um it's I wouldn't say disrespectful. I know a lot of people have talked about this. If I'm playing a much weaker player, I don't mind if they play on because it's a good experience for them. But if it's if there's someone else, uh, you know, it, it seems strange. It seems strange to play on when really there should only be one result here, and um, that result should be you know unless I do something horribly wrong, um, then it should be okay i mean okay i i won't i'll stop moaning about him not resigning we can play it on uh why not if he wants to what well, my piece and a pawn up it's not just a piece i mean that's 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 a lot of that's a lot of juice isn't it a couple of things i have to avoid is a mating net with the queen coming down to g7 that's one idea uh what other things do i have to avoid well um i don't know there's not too much more let's eliminate that one shall we let's get more pieces off the board if he takes here i can just take back so the only thing i have to really worry about is f6 and then his queen trying to come to g7 but there should be a number of ways to defend against that of course i'm thinking about activating my queen now so let's have a look queen c5 f6 queen here queen g5 and uh, he can never go queen h6 because my bishop uh, that should be easily winning so I'm just going to play that uh, try to get my queen to as most active square I can and just try to bring it in here obviously if I swap queens it really is game over there's one hope I suppose he can play on because he's got this f pawn, but it really shouldn't be scaring me too much and with this idea I'm just trying to bring my queen to a nice central square and I increase my pressure on this diagonal meaning I have very good defensive possibilities I also wanted to stop him from playing d4 because I like my bishop on this square. It seems quite strong. Uh, central square for my bishop. So I didn't want my opponent. No, don't do that. Bloody hell, that's really gonna that's really gonna come and bite me and you know, really gonna do me some damage at some point, isn't it? Um, okay, here I can even play f6 and g5 myself, if I so wish. And uh, let's just click somewhere else well away from that. F6 uh queen here g5 h4 well i can just take on h4 is he going to try to swing his rook around no I, i'm going to play this because this stops my opponent from ever playing his idea and it su should secure my bishop on this square there's probably more ways more than one way to win this one and now i'm going to come here if we get the queens off it's game over this is my plan get the queen to a nice good square and he's really running out of ideas. I'll probably play g5 to stop anything happening over on the king's side. Queen h6 doesn't help him now. It's not. There's no threat. And my main idea here is to play queen h4 because I want to get the last... I want to make it as simple as I can. Making exchanges when you material up is the way to play. And, and that would just completely kill the game off. If I'm feeling adventurous, maybe I'll put a rook on an open file first. But I, I don't necessarily need to. Um, to do that uh, da, 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 da. so if I go here he goes here do I put the rook on the open file he might come in then so let's stop well I was thinking should we stop his queen from doing that I've got queen here oh then he has check and I lose my queen and I lose the game so that's one way I can lose um, what else g4 is quite tempting as well let's play g4 let's do this move ask his queen where it's going to go because I may just take this one if he's not careful. And as soon as I kick his queen away from this diagonal, which is, is a little bit active, I was thinking if I go rook c8, he goes queen b7. 
I don't want to allow his queen to get active. But now if his queen goes to e2, which it has done, I should be able to play rook c8 because he can't attack my rook uh, easily with his queen. And uh, this this is very easily winning now. Well, it has been for a while. I'm just going to play h5, guard this pawn. I might put my king on g7 so my rook can swing back and attack him over here now. And other ways I can win. Rook c3, take this pawn. I like king g7. Do I even take with the queen now? Let's take with the queen. Uh, like I mentioned before, exchanging queens is going to be the easiest way to win. If he doesn't exchange now, his king is going to be in a mating net. Uh, so he has to exchange queens at some point. Well, I don't think he's going to survive much longer now with queen h4 coming. He really should be resigning at this moment. Another A nice way to have won there would have been rook c2 actually. Queen takes there, queen h4 check. King g1, bishop h2 check, king h1, bishop g3 check, king g1, and then queen g h2 checkmate. Um, and please, you really should be resigning now, son. I don't know why I called him son. I mean, come on, there's absolutely no point playing on. You are playing the grandmaster. You are a piece down. You haven't played very well. You blundered a piece. You moved too quickly. And I'm not going to really, don't want to sit here and wait for you to time down. Oh, God, anyone who does that should be immediately banned from chess.com, shouldn't they? Does that happen to any of you guys? Someone just, you know, bad sport. They just, you know, oh, I'm going to lose. I'm going to I'm going to pull a strop. I'm going to I'm going to go and make a cup of tea while I wait my time to go down. I mean, come on, have a little bit of respect uh, in the world. That's all you need. Oh, come on, man. If he goes down to 10 minutes, I'm going to be very annoyed with this guy. Very annoyed with Chowd Hurry, um, whoever this patser is. I'm already getting annoyed. I'm already starting calling him obscenities. You bloody patsa. Come on. Thank you. You're not a patsa. You're a lovely chap, actually. I I'll take that all back now. Thank you for the game. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. Nice short win. Um, I don't think there's too much to talk about in that game I haven't mentioned. Um, the opening, the Sicilian is um, uh, oh, you know what? You know what that? You know what chess.com has said there? It says great win. Um, I made zero mistakes, zero blunders, and zero miss wins. So that's a perfectly played game, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, I'm bloody good, aren't I? And so this is the classical Sicilian. Just to tell you a little bit about the theory, the main line, and which Mickey Adams played against me, uh, he played bishop g5, and after e6 here, he played queen to d2. You put the queen on d2 here because you need to defend the knight, and after a6, he castled bishop d7, f4. And as you can see, this is a much more uh, aggressive system to play. You know, I mean, why why not play like this if you're white? Try to checkmate me. On the other hand, I try to checkmate him. Uh, Adams beat me in that game uh, in the British Knockout Championships. I'll try to do some videos on that later on. Um, the way my opponent played it was also pretty standard. Standard position, but as soon as he played Queen H3, which I saw coming... He's lost. So this is his losing move. Uh, what should he play here? Well, if he's going to do that idea, why doesn't he take here and then go queen h3? Maybe he can play this move. This is a much better way. Because if I go e5 now, it doesn't do anything. I don't attack these two pieces. Um, and now his threat is to go e5 and to checkmate me here. I expect that I just play g6 in this position. And I have quite a lot of central pressure going on here. You know, I'm threatening to go b4 and to take the pawn on e4 because he has two pieces defending. I have two attacking. So if I get rid of one of his defenders, I can win a good central pawn. And I think I'm quite solid here. This is a normal, normal, very standard, standard type of position. So, um, you know, I don't think there's anything too much to, to panic about here. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm going to actually stream today if you get this video in time, which I doubt. First time in a long time at 2 o'clock uh, GMT until 4 o'clock. I'm going to try to do some more YouTube videos now. I, I won't be around tomorrow, but I I'm back from playing some chess and preparing. So I have more time to do YouTube videos. And um, like I mentioned, the latest product we have in the shop is the Leningrad Dutch DVD um, joint commentary by me and another very strong Grandmaster Ruland from Holland. If you want to learn an exciting opening against 1d4 
then this opening concentrates on f5. We especially look at what to do against knight c3 and against bishop g5 and also against the London system with bishop f4. So uh, well worth checking it out if you go to the shop, uh, gingergm.com and just click on the shop page there. You can download this. It's, it's not actually a physical DVD. You can download it and watch it on your iPad, tablet, even on your phone when you go to work. Can't be a bad deal, that. Thank you very much. Good to be back. And yeah, please do like the video and please do subscribe to the channel. Um, and I'll be telling you more about uh, my 30,000 subscriber special stream at some point soon in the future. Bye for now.